Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed about rape culture. Denial by deconstruction. I've noticed a tendency among people who are skeptical of the notion of rape culture to deconstruct the term in an attempt to define it as literally as possible. Rape culture? You mean a culture that approves of rape? But in our culture, rapists are ostracized and held criminally responsible for their actions. We obviously can't have a rape culture. But the term rape culture doesn't refer strictly to a culture where rape is viewed upon generally as normal and acceptable behavior. Rape culture actually refers to the accumulation of beliefs, attitudes, and mores that encourage people to associate sexuality with violence, for instance, or to condone or at least minimize the seriousness of sexual assaults, or to view things like rape and other forms of sexual violence as inevitable facts of life that we just have to deal with. And these various beliefs, attitudes, and mores can manifest themselves in a variety of forms. For instance, victim blaming. One of the most familiar examples of victim blaming is the insistence that women who dress in sexually provocative clothes are increasing their risk of being raped in the same way that a homeowner known to have a brand new big screen TV is increasing his risk of being robbed by not locking his front door. The crucial detail missed by most of the people who say something like this, is that neither the rape victim in the sexy dress nor the homeowner who has been robbed have done anything wrong, and yet it's the potential rape victim who's being presented with this analogy, not the potential theft victim. The suggestion that rape should be dealt with by encouraging women to dress more conservatively doesn't deserve to be taken any more seriously than the suggestion that a rash of break-ins be dealt with by encouraging everybody to lock their doors at night. But there's another side to this, and it has to do not with victim blaming, but victim playing. According to some who are skeptical of the concept, the true victims of rape culture aren't women, but men, who are being broadly painted as potential rapists because the only reason for wanting to educate men about issues like consent or objectification of women is because women secretly believe that any given man is only two or three decisions away from becoming a rapist, obviously. Another common complaint is that raising awareness about the issues involved with rape culture will only embolden vindictive women to falsely accuse men of rape out of revenge or a desire to exercise the mad, misandric power that all women secretly covet. Of course, in order to assume that men are the true victims of rape culture, one would have to believe that those various customs and social pressures I referred to earlier either don't exist or aren't that important. Which brings me straight to number four, blindness to sexist social pressures. I have a hard time accepting that so many people, most of whom are fellow men, can't or won't see the sexism, misogyny, and male privileging gender inequality that still negatively affects the lives of millions of people here in my home country of the United States, let alone throughout the rest of the world. But even if you can't see it, you still don't have a very good excuse for ignoring it, because lots of women have seen it and have been talking about it very publicly for all of the last 50 or 60 years. All you have to do is listen. Not listen and rationalize, not listen and reflexively dismiss, but listen with the thought that maybe, just maybe, the person talking might know something about what the fuck she's talking about. Belittling of survivor experiences. One of the most regrettable results of rape culture and of the denial of rape culture is that women who have been victims of sexual assaults are made to feel as though their experiences don't matter. Educate people about rape, encourage men to be more aware of and sensitive to the concerns and needs of women, pursue rape prevention strategies that aim to change harmful customs and values instead of just teaching women where to park and how to dress. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of work. And what about all those men who would never dream of raping someone? 
It wouldn't be fair to them, now would it? <sighs> I'm sorry, honey. I mean, it really is a shame that you were raped, but big picture? It's just not that important. Run along now. Oh, would it kill you to smile more often? You're so much prettier when you smile. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time.